Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, I'm Janetta, an author who loves to draw. On my channel, I focus on combining storytelling with art. If that's something you're interested in, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let's get to it. SSMD, so it begins, chapter 11, let me in, Eva. Seeing Mike in front of my house rattled my nerves. I needed a few minutes to regain my composure before speaking with Leah. Let me grab us some coffee and then we'll talk. I called to Leah as I rushed into the kitchen. I paced back and forth for a minute trying to regain my composure. I forced myself to stop and take some deep breaths. Somewhat calmer, I grabbed the coffee pot off the automatic coffee maker and poured two cups. I placed them on a tray with a cup of cream and some packs of sweeteners. Taking another deep breath, I picked up the tray and walked into the family room. It was empty. Leah, I called to her. I'm in your office, she answered. She was sitting at my desk when I entered. I was just reading some of the posts for today. This one from Confused Irene is interesting. What does it say, I asked, sitting in the tray on my desk and grabbing my cup. Dear SSMD, I am deeply in love with my boyfriend. He is a good man who I can see being my husband and the future father of my children. However, I have recently met someone that I'm extremely attracted to and I can't stop thinking about him. He is sexy and chocolate with a very well cut body. I would like to say he's husband material as well, but I get distracted by the sparks in the room anytime I'm near him and can't think straight. I have been fighting my craving for chocolate, but it's giving me hell. My boyfriend keeps asking me what is going on with me. I keep ducking and dodging the subject, but the truth is the new guy got me thinking about leaving the one I'm with. Should I stick to what I know, or should I explore the possibilities with the new guy? Sincerely, Confused Irene. Sounds like somebody else is about to sabotage her own happiness, Leah said getting out of my chair and moving to one of the two guest chairs that I placed in front of my desk, more for decoration than from a plan to use them. I handed her a cup of coffee before taking a seat at my desk. You mentioned before that you were sabotaging your life. Was Monday's event the catalyst or has something else happened? You would think that Monday would have been enough, but no, I had to go over there and get a dose of reality. You went over to Sharon's? When? This morning, I came here from there. Did you know Sharon has left? The kids thought I was there checking on them while she's gone. I've been trying to reach her all week, but all my calls have gone into voicemail. So Philip and the kids were by themselves? Phil's mother isn't helping them out? Not as far as I can tell, but to be truthful, I didn't stick around to find out. Eva, I thought that when Philip saw me, he would apologize. Tell me he's confused and has feelings for me. I thought I'd see something that said I was more to him than a fling. I didn't see or hear anything that I expected. Matter of fact, when I told him we didn't have anything to talk about, he was relieved. I am such a fool. Tears ran freely down her face. I'm tired of getting myself in these predicaments. I want to be happy, but right now, I don't even know what would make me happy. That's why I'm here. I want you to help me sort it out and come up with a plan. One of my coworkers has hired a life coach, and at the time I thought it was silly, but it has helped her a great deal. I'm asking you to coach me. You're kidding, right? I don't know anything about being a life coach. Doesn't matter because you have until next Thursday at 5 to research and find out. Leah stood up and grabbed her purse from off the floor by her chair. She wiped her tears away with two swipes of her hand. Whoa, why then? I stood. My stomach was in knots because I didn't expect her sudden departure. Because that's my first scheduled appointment. After that, we'll meet on Mondays so I can start my week focused. Don't bother to say no. I need help, and you are the only one I trust. Well, sit down and let's talk now. I wasn't sure if Mike had left yet. Can't. I have to get to work. I'm already an hour late. I'll call you later. I followed her to the door feeling panicked. I resisted the urge to shout for her to wait and stood back as she opened the door and let herself out. Get back to confused Irene. 
She needs your help now, Leah said before shutting the door. I locked it and then rushed to the window. Mike's car was gone. Relief flooded my body. I watched Leah climb in her car and drive off. I went back to my office, now ready to refocus myself. On the floor by the chair Leah had sat in was Leah's cell phone. She can't live without this thing. I picked it up thinking how Leah was probably already on her way back for it. Five minutes later, my doorbell rang. I grabbed Leah's cell phone and went to answer the door. Out of habit, I peeked out the peephole and my heart stopped. Open the door, Eva. No more running and hiding. I heard you come to the door and it's time we talked. Mike stood waiting for me to open the door. Chapter 12, Face the Music. I stood frozen in front of the door. I wanted, no, I needed more time. I wasn't ready to talk to Mike. Come on, Eva, I'm not leaving until we talk. Mike continued to speak to me through the door. Mike, I can't do this, please leave. I don't think your fiance will be happy that you are here. I mentioned Rachel as a reminder to myself. Ignoring the my fiance comment, Mike said, we both know I'm not going anywhere until we talk. I took a moment to remind myself why I had left him. Use your head, not your heart, I whispered to myself, and then opened the door. He stepped in quickly. Shutting the door, I turned to him and said, let's make this quick. Just answer one question to my satisfaction and I'll leave. Which is? I stopped because I already knew the question. Look me in the eye and tell me why the hell you walked out on me without so much as a goodbye. It was exactly the question I expected. I couldn't look him in the eye for two reasons. First, I would melt inside if I did and my brain would go to mush. Second, I knew I was wrong for leaving him the way I did. I placed my sight on the center of his forehead and told him the truth. I wasn't strong enough to leave any other way. Why leave at all, Eva? He reached out and gently cut my chin, lowering it until our eyes met. Why, he repeated. My mouth opened, but words eluded me. I tried, but couldn't stop tears from welling up in my eyes and spilling onto my cheek. If that wasn't bad enough, Mike pulled me into his arms and held me as I cried on his chest. It felt so good to be back in his arms, and for one moment, I pretended that we were still together. Realizing I was heading in the wrong direction, I pulled out of his embrace and turned away from him. Mike, we wanted different things. I wanted to get married and have children. You didn't want either. I wanted us to spend more time together. All you wanted to do was work. Marriage is not all it's made out to be. Remember, I've already tried it and learned the hard way. I turned back to him, now gathering strength from my anger. That was with the wrong woman. I was supposed to be the right one. It really doesn't matter now anyway, since you apparently found the right one in Rachel. Talk about rebounding. Nice rock, by the way. You should like it since it was originally intended for you. My face displayed the shock I was feeling. Mike continued. You know what bothers me about the whole situation, Eva? You didn't even think enough of me to come to me and say you were considering leaving. You just walked away. And right up until that point, you were the right woman. My doorbell rang, startling me. Mike walked by me and opened the door. Mike, what are you doing here? Leah looked as if she was caught off guard. I was wanting the same thing my damn self, Mike said in love. Leah looked over at me and asked, are you okay? Hard to say right now, I'm kind of numb. I think I was still shocked to hear he brought the ring for me. Look, I'm okay. I lied and handed the cell phone to her. Get to work before I have to coach you on finding a new job. Leah took the phone. I do have to go and I will call you later, but promise me two things before I leave, which are, one, promise me you will not sit in this house rehashing what just transpired between you and Mike and going down memory lane. Two, you will get back to work and focus on other people's problems, starting with confused Irene. Good plan. So I'll say yes to both. I didn't fully keep the first promise, but I did keep the second. 
It took me a while, but I finally posted a response to Irene. Dear Confused Irene, I noticed you spoke of love when you mentioned your boyfriend and lust when you spoke of the new man. If you truly love your boyfriend, you should not give in to the temptation for chocolate. Imagine how you would feel if the tables were turned. Doesn't a good guy deserve to be treated better? Temptation come along to test our character. And if you try to gamble and think you're going to walk away with it all, love and good guys are treasures worth keeping. And chocolate can be found at any corner store. Sincerely, the SSMD Advisor. Hope you enjoyed today's story. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be and stay blessed.